to my channel. This is T Thoughts and I'm Teresa and I create videos that encourage you to live the abundant life that God has so graciously given to us. I upload videos every Monday and on Wednesdays. On Mondays you are going to get a dose of hope to encourage you for the week and on uh, Wednesdays you're going to get the truth corner where we nourish our souls through in-depth Bible study and learning spiritual disciplines. Y'all this is a truth corner episode. <laughs> I'm so excited as we are going into um, our continuing our study on the book of James. Last week we did um, the um, kind of like the foundation of the book of James and now we are actually going to go in and dive into um, chapter one. We're going to dive into chapter one. Now if this is your first time uh, watching, seeing this video or being a part of us, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. I really hope that you uh, find some encouragement and find uh, what you need uh, through this uh, video. Um, but the last video we did, which was the introduction to James, I asked you guys to read all five chapters of the book of James and then go back and read chapter one. Do your annotations, do your highlights, circle, put some, circle some words that stand out to you, um, any words that um, you need to look up, anything that you may have questions about and all of that stuff, because that is part of um, studying the Bible through perspective, okay? And so, so we want to start digging in and rereading the Bible. So let's hop on in and let's talk, get into James chapter one. Okay, now I'm going to read. Now chapter one has 25 verses. So what I did was I kind of broke it up into sections and kind of split it up that way. So I'm going to read verses one through four, then we'll go back into it and kind of do some highlights and things like that. Okay. All right. So it starts off saying, James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes dispersed abroad greetings. Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. All right, that's verses one through four. Now, I have done, can you see my... Y'all, I am playing with my camera with the lightings and I bought some new lighting. So let me know if this is too bright. Um, I'm still learning my camera. So if it is too bright, let me know. I wanted a clean aesthetic. And so, which I got my new pictures in the background. Let me know how you like them. I bought these from Hobby Lobby and I think Etsy. But anyway, these are really, really cute. So let me see, let me see. Okay. So anyway, I just want to show you my room. I'm updating uh, my prayer room. So anyway, um, <laughs> so let's dive into verses one through four. Okay, so James starts off with an introduction and a greeting. Okay, he starts off telling you who I am. James, he is a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is writing this letter to the 12 tribes dis dispersed abroad, abroad, okay? So, but then he, after his introduction, he begins to um, talk to the, the, the church and he tells them, consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. Now, he begins this letter with a consideration. He says, consider um, your reaction to tests and trials. He tells them to, instead of um, mummering and complaining and, and, and all that and being angry, he tells them, consider it joy when trials come. And don't be angry or lose hope. Instead, consider, and that word consider means think carefully about what you are going through. And when you think about it carefully, he said, instead of um, being angry, 
consider it joy. Consider it um, God is with you even in the hard times. He is making you. He is producing endurance in you. Um, the testing of our faith is being, is being tried, um, but it is being matured. Okay, so trials, he's, this is what he's saying. Trials produces patience and endurance. So he is telling them, obviously, there were some things happening during this time. Um, probably the persecution of the church. Um, people were just living life and just, just life was lifing. And so James is telling them, guys, consider it joy. Instead of anger, consider it joy that you're tr that you're that you are going through a trial. Not that we praise the trial, and I talked about this in um, one of my dose of hope videos where I said talked about enduring trials. And it's not that we are so oh my god, I'm so excited because I'm going through a trial. No. <laughs> No, we are not so like trials come that sometimes things are hurtful, but he is also saying in this God is working something out in me. God is working something through me. He is giving me endurance. My faith is being strengthened in this time. And so I'm going to consider it joy. I'm going to choose joy instead of being angry because I'm going through something. Okay. All right. So. Um, and look what he said in verse four. He said, and let endurance have its full effect. Why? So that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. He's telling them, let endurance take place. Let it have its full effect. Because at the end of this thing, you're going to be mature. You're going to be complete and you're not going to lack anything. All right. Okay. Let's go to verses 5 through 8. And this is good. Let me know in the comments what you, um, what you might have got when you studied um, verses 1 through 4. And when you, what you studied in chapter 1. Let me know what, you, what the Lord revealed to you about joy and counting in all joy during tests and trials. Okay, so let's go to 5 verses 5 through 8. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Okay, so let's look at a couple of words, okay? So he talks about wisdom, he talks about faith, and he talks about doubting. So let's see what wisdom means. Wisdom means quality of having a quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Wisdom is knowledge applied. Faith is um, belief and total trust in God. It is a strong and welcome conviction in God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Okay, now let's look at doubting. Doubting is a divided loyalty. Okay, um, it is when you basically when you ask something and then you have doubts or you you don't really believe um, that what you're asking or what you're thinking. So that's when you go into doubting. Okay, now. What is James saying? He says in verse five, now if it, now that we have those words, okay, and we kind of have an understanding of what those words means, he says, now, if any of you lack wisdom, meaning experience, knowledge, and good judgment, a quality of those things, you should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly. God gives us this, he'll give us wisdom if we ask. If we don't understand something, we ask God and he will give us an understanding of it and he will give us wisdom and he does that ungrudgingly, okay? He's telling them this. So when we do not understand or know something, we need to ask God. He gives it to, he gives wisdom freely and he gives it to us generously, okay? And so whatever that the people of that time and what the church was needing, he said, ask wisdom, ask God. He said, let, but here's the thing in verse six, he says, let them ask in faith without doubting 
For the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person can't receive anything because you don't you don't really believe what you're asking and or whom you're asking of. Okay? And so when you are doubting, when asking, we are to ask in faith without doubting, without the need of physical proof. James tells the tribe to have total expectation that God is going to answer them. When one doubts, they are double-minded. Double-minded is wavering in the mind, is indecisive and unstable. We miss God when fear and doubt hold precedence over faith in the Lord's willingness to keep his word. Okay? So, he's telling them, you can't doubt when you ask God for something. You have to put your faith, your belief, and your trust in God, your strong conviction in the Lord. You have to put that faith, put your faith in in what you're asking him that god will answer you god will give you wisdom he will answer your cry he said his ear is open to our cry and not only is it open but he'll answer okay he said look the um he says but let him ask without uh, in faith without doubting because god gives them to us generously okay Here's some scriptures that I looked up. I won't read them, but um, you can read them in your own time. Um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, Matthew 14, 28 through 31, and Matthew 21, 18 through 12. Okay, let's go to verses 9 through 11. Let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his in his exaltation, but let the rich boast in his humiliation, because he will pass away like a flower of the field. For the sun rises, and together with the scorching wind, dries up the grass. Its flowers fall off, and its beautiful appearance perishes. In the same way, the rich person will either will wither away while pursuing his activities. Okay, now. This scripture, um, it, it, I kind of went, I kind of had to ask the Lord about this, this text. Um, and cause I was going back and forth with the, um, humble circumstances, boast and exaltation and the rich boast in his humiliation. So I was kind of going back and forth with that, trying to just get an understanding of, you know, uh, of what James was trying to convey to to the people, and so here's what I I, I came up with. So, um, the rich and the poor must respond to life with wisdom. Okay, material items they're gonna fade away, but God wants us to look at eternal things. Um, so, and I was thinking about that, and I wrote this question down. I said, Does conforming to Jesus equal struggle? And I kept going back and forth with that because um, sometimes we we put poor with um, salvation and rich with the devil. <laughs> okay, and um, and I think during that time frame, and I and I had to, and the Holy Spirit kept reminding me, remember the audience. Okay, and this is why we have to remember who the writer was talking to, what was going on in that time. And a lot of times the people were poor, and a lot of the poor people chose Jesus, where some of the rich didn't want to remember the rich ruler, couldn't give up his stuff, couldn't give up his um, riches in order to follow Christ. And so in a lot of the richer or more um, high status people, uh, were tormenting the Christian Jews who were not, you know, they weren't, they were considered poor. And so I had to kind of look at that and see, um, you know, what James was saying during that time. And God says the humble, he will, he will exalt the humble. You know, those who are, um, who are rich and have humility, he will exalt you. Those who are poor in spirit, God will exalt you. So sometimes there will be struggle. Okay. We, there is struggle in life. There is times that we struggle. But here's the good thing. 
um, God has overcome the world. He told us, he said, trials and tribulations are going to come. But here's the thing. I be of good cheer because I've overcome it. I've overcome the, wor the world. So go back to verse 2. Consider it joy <laughs> when you go through trials and tribulations. So God looks on the humble and they are exalted. The rich who boast in themselves will be brought low because um, what they put their trust in will fade away. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. Only what we do for him is going to last. Riches are going to fade away. Um, houses and all the things here on the earth, that stuff is going to fade away. But our love for Jesus and what we do for him is going to last. Okay? So, that's 9 through, through, through 11. Let me know what you got out of that verse. Tell me, um, I'll be curious to see um, what you got out of that too. Okay? Because look at verse 12 and it says, Blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those whom he loves. So, when we endure trials, uh, we stand through the end, stand on God's word, don't faint, don't give up. You us, because those who he loves, we shall receive a crown of life, okay? All right, guys. Now, let's go to, I wanted to go down to verse 19, okay? Verses 19 through 26. Let me just hit on the temptation real quick, okay? So it's in verse number 13. It says, no one, going, no one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil. And he himself doesn't tempt anyone, okay? Now, and then let's go to 16. It said, I mean, 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, who does not change like shifting shadows, but his own... By his own choice, he gave us uh, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would be kind of a first fruit of his creatures. Okay. I want to touch on that temptation because um, a lot of times we'd be like, oh, the, the, you know, God is, you may hear people say, well, God is tempting me. Or the people may thought God is tempting me or he is causing this problem. God does not tempt us to do wrong. Okay. He does not tempt us to do wrong. The enemy of our souls tempts us our flesh and our that other half of us our flesh side is tempted but but the bible tells us that with every temptation god has given us a way of escape out okay we have to choose the way of escape instead of falling for the temptation every day when we say lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all that is evil okay god does not tempt us to do evil all right. Okay. So let's go down to verse 19. Now this section is talking about hearing and doing. Okay. Hearing and doing the word. Now let's go to 19. My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. Humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Look at 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> so, James now begins to pivot. And he, um, he says, he starts talking about how the Christian should speak and not to be so quick to get angry. How, we are, how they are to get rid of filth and immoral things and behaviors. Look, the word we ha we need to receive the word humbly, even when it stops us on our toes. 
Y'all, have y'all ever been in service and the pastor is preaching and what he preaching about, you be like, ooh, ouch, mm, dang, I just did that. Oh, no. <laughs> I have the word should convict you okay it should convict you okay not condemn you because we don't there's no condemnation in, in Christ Jesus but it does convict us to change okay it draws us to repentance okay so there are times when we find ourselves and we may be dealing with some some issues of our flesh our hearts may have some issues, issue, heart issues, okay? And so there are times when we have to lay before the Father because we're, we're remember, we're still in this earthly body. And there's some things that we have to de steadily deal with, okay? So he's telling them, Christian standards, my brothers and sisters, we should be quick to listen, not always to be quick to speak, <laughs> quick to tell our part okay but we need to be quick, quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger i don't know why we get so mad in this right now in this society everybody angry it's like people are just angry why are, there's there's some good things that we can be happy about i know the world is being the world but consider it joy come on consider it joy all right so not to be so angry okay we are to receive the word of god humbly even when it convicts us and the, and god is trying to get us to where we need to be in him all right even in conversations listen sometimes people just want to want you to hear them and not talk so much because sometimes we and we're going to talk about this tongue we're going to talk about it okay our tongue can get us into trouble so let's not be so quick to get angry because look at verse 20 human anger does not accomplish god's righteousness okay therefore rid yourselves he's telling them rid yourselves of moral filth and evil that is prevalent there was some stuff happening back there in james's world just like there's stuff happening now but we are to get rid of immoral filth evil things and humbly receive the implanted word of god that is able to save your soul okay all right now let's talk about being the doer of the word but this is what he says. He said, instead of getting angry, instead of doing all that stuff, be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Don't deceive yourself. Don't just be like, oh, I'm just going to hear it and do, and do nothing with it. No, after you hear this Bible study and after you go through this, now do something. <laughs> do something. Now, we, only, we don't want to just re we receive the word not only want to, to receive it but we want to do something with it okay so because if anyone is a hero of the word and not a doer he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror and then forgets who he is we don't want to do that we want to apply the word to our lives apply the word to our lives but this, because look, look at number 25. He says, but the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and preserves, perseveres, sorry, perseveres in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of who works. This person will be blessed in what he does. Come on. We're going to talk more about um, doing in chapter two. But this is what this is good, y'all. We need to get into a practice of doing what the word says. If you're sitting, for example, if you're sitting in uh, a Sunday morning worship and the pastor's preaching and say he's talking about um, pride, okay, and and you feel that conviction in your heart that there's pride in you, what do you do? You take that sermon, you take that scripture that the, that the man of God preached, and then you take it, you study it, and then you begin to pray about it. And when pride starts to build up, you begin to now cast down that stronghold. You begin to pray against pride. And then start confessing 
healing against pride. Okay? Look for those triggers that will help that that would cause you to be proudful. Alright? So we need to be doers of the word. We need to be a, uh, not just a hearer, but a doer of the word. Let, number 22, verse 22, he says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's good to hear, but we all must also do, which is application. Okay? All right, guys. Now, that's it. That's chapter one. We have gone through chapter one of James. Y'all, I'm so excited. I hope and pray that this video has blessed you. Now, let's go. Let's 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 talk about next week in chapter two. Read chapter two. <laughs> Read chapter two. Do the same thing. Start highlighting. Circle any, any words that stand out to you or that you need to um, look up. And write down any questions that you may have. I had questions. I had questions in here. Like, you know, under double-minded and unstable in all his ways. I needed to look that up. Why joy in trials? I wrote that down in my margins. In um, chapter 2, I got a lot of questions in chapter 2. I'm writing them down. So, let me show you where I am. Hopefully you can see it. I hope so. Um that's where i am in chapter two so i'm digging in just with you guys and trying to uh, we're going to do this thing together okay all righty guys now that's your homework read chapter two okay and your other homework is share this video with a friend y'all we all need encouragement we all need to know how to study the bible we all need to dive into the bible and so share it with a friend um if you are not subscribed consider subscribing i would love to have you a part of the t-stops community um and yeah i just love to have you thank you for those who've already subscribed thank you for everyone that supports this channel i really really appreciate you guys and yeah yeah, let's build y'all let's build for the glory of god all right guys as always be kind to yourself be kind to someone else and have a grace-filled day i will see you next week bye